Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to my video on how to answer table completion questions. Table and flowchart completion questions come up frequently in the IELTS reading test. They look harder than they are, but as long as you understand what you have to do and have a good strategy for completing them, you'll be able to score well. This video covers all you need to know including an explanation of this question type, the skills needed, key tips, a proven strategy for answering them, and an example from a real test paper with step-by-step -step instructions. For this type of question, you'll be given a table of information with gaps in it. You're required to fill the gaps with appropriate words from the reading text. You could also be given a flowchart the main difference between the two is in the way the information is laid out. The process for completing flowcharts is exactly the same as with a table. The instructions will tell you how many words you are allowed to use to fill each gap. Read them carefully. They will most likely tell you to use one word only or no more than two words. If you use the wrong number of words, your answer will be marked incorrect even if the information you give is correct. Here are examples of two sets of instructions taken from past test papers. This first one is a table. Pause the video if you want to spend a few moments studying it. This second example is a flowchart. These are often easier to complete as the information you need to complete them generally comes in order in the text. Again, pause the video if you want more time to look over it. Table completion questions test your ability in a range of reading skills. You need to be able to scan for specific information, skim for general meaning, understand paraphrasing, identify synonyms and read in detail for meaning. The information in the table or flowchart will match information in the text but it will very likely be paraphrased and include synonyms. Once you've located where in the text the answer is located, you'll need to interpret the language to identify the word or words you need to fill the gaps in the table or flowchart. Now for some important tips. Tip 1. Table completion and flowchart questions are not as hard as they look. If you use the step-by-step -step strategy I'm going to teach you, you shouldn't have too many problems answering them. Step 2. This type of question can be presented in many different forms, especially in the case of flowcharts, so may not look exactly like either of the examples I've given you. Don't panic if the layout is unfamiliar. What you need to do to complete the task will be the same however it might look. Tip 3. The information in the table may appear in a different order to the matching information in the reading text. It's in flowchart questions that the information is most likely to come in order in the text. Tip 4. Fill the gap with the exact words from the text. Don't use synonyms or your answer will be marked incorrect. Tip 5. When studying the table, Try to work out what type of word is missing, for example a noun, a verb, an adjective or an adverb. This will help you to find it more quickly. Tip 6. Always be thinking about synonyms and paraphrasing. Look for matching meaning rather than exact word matches when comparing the information in the table and in the text. Tip 7. Scan to find the location of the answer, then read in detail to find the answer itself. Tip 8. The completed sentences must be grammatically correct. If they aren't, then you have the wrong answer. Tip 9. Use any little clues that are present in the table to help you understand the type of information you need to find. For example, column headings such as a test and findings in the first example we looked at, or words in bold 
such as theory 1 and theory 2 in the second example. Tip 10. You don't need to understand everything. Even if some of the vocabulary is unfamiliar, you'll probably be able to work out the answers from context and other clues. I'll show you how to apply the strategy in a minute, but first you need to understand it. Start by reading the instructions carefully and noting how many words you're required to write in the gaps. For example, no more than two words. Next, look at the layout of the table and work out the best way to read it, particularly noting any headings that will give you clues as to the subject and content. Then, quickly read through the sentences or phrases with gaps in to get a general idea of what information you'll be looking for in the text. Try and work out what type of word is missing in each case, such as a noun, a verb or an adjective. Then skim read the text to get a general understanding of what it's about and note key words or ideas beside each paragraph. This will help you to quickly find the information again later. Now go back to the table and read the first phrase or sentence with a gap in it. Select key words and scan for them in order to locate the paragraph that contains the answer. The notes you wrote beside the paragraphs may also help you to identify the correct one. Next, read the section of text you've identified in detail to find the answer. Remember that synonyms and paraphrasing may have been used. Check that your answer makes sense, is grammatically correct and doesn't go over the word limit. Write your answer on the answer sheet, making sure you spell it correctly. Then repeat the process to fill in the remaining gaps. This practice test we're now going to work on comes from the official IELTS website and involves completing a flowchart. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, you can download a PDF of the instructions, flowchart and text to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to them in the notes below this video. Here's the text. This passage is just part of the full text used in the exam. In the real test, a longer version appeared, and it had several different types of questions set on it. You don't need to read the text yet, as we have some work to do on the flowchart first. Now I'll show you step by step how I'd answer this question. First, I read the instructions carefully and note how many words I'm required to write in the gaps. In this case, it's no more than two words. I also look at the layout of the flowchart and work out the best way to read it. I take particular notice of the headings, which give me clues as to its subject and content. In this question, we've been given a flowchart that lays out a recruitment process in chronological order. Next, I quickly read through the sentences with gaps in to get a general idea of what information I'll be looking for in the text. I then skim read the text and note key words or main ideas beside each paragraph. This will help me to quickly find the information again later. You can see an example of this on the slide. I now go back to the flowchart and read the first sentence with a gap in it. Candidates go online to complete their something. Since this is a flowchart containing information about a chronological process, I know that the information is most likely to come in order in the text. This is very helpful to know. I select the word online as the keyword in the statement and scan the text for it, starting with the notes I've made beside each paragraph. I immediately see online application in my notes beside paragraph 2. So scan this paragraph. I find the key word in the very first sentence. I read this paragraph in detail to find the word I need to fill the gap. It's clear that the missing word is application or initial application. It makes sense and is grammatically correct. 
either is acceptable as the answer. You can see what a time saver making the notes can be. I didn't even need to scan the whole text to locate this answer. I move on to the second sentence in the flowchart. Suitable candidates are then invited to come to a something. I choose the phrase invited to come to scan for. I suspect that a synonym or other form of paraphrasing might appear in the text, so I'm mindful of this as I scan. I also see that my next recorded note beside the text is walk-in day and predict that this could be a good fit for the sentence. I scan from the location of the first answer in paragraph 2 and soon spot the phrase asked to attend, which means the same as invited to come. Candidates are asked to attend a walk-in day, so my prediction was correct and this is the answer. Note that hyphenated words such as walk-in count as one word, so I'm within the word limit. I fill in my answer and move on. I now read the third sentence. After having satisfactorily completed a something, successful candidates will then go to an assessment centre. I choose assessment centre for my key words. I can see from my notes that assessment centre appears in the next paragraph, so I don't actually need to scan for it. Having identified the correct paragraph, I go back to the sentence and select another set of keywords to help me locate the answer. I choose satisfactorily completed, which comes immediately before the missing word, so directly relates to it. I now scan the paragraph for these keywords or synonyms of them. The information in this paragraph needs a bit more interpretation than for the previous answers because the matching information in the text contains synonyms and is also paraphrased. However, once I spot the phrase required to pass, which means the same thing as satisfactorily completed and occurs in the same sentence also containing assessment centre, I read in detail to find the answer. It's clearly swimming test. For answer 24, Kiwi Air then asks for something and candidates are required to undergo a medical check. The obvious keyword to scan for is medical check. It should be easy to spot this or a synonym. As before, I start to scan from location of the last answer. I don't have to scan far as it's just two sentences further on at the end of the paragraph. I now know where the answer is and read the sentence in detail to check that the information matches the gap sentence. Although medical check has not been changed, there are a couple of synonyms present. Request has been used instead of asked for, and attend a medical check means the same as undergo a medical check. I'm happy that I have a match of information and look to see what is asked for or requested. It's verbal references, so this is the answer. Sentence 25 has no obvious keywords to scan for, so, having read it to get a general sense of its meaning, I go to the text and look for a matching idea in my notes. There is a match. No immediate need for flight attendance in the sentence means the same as not hiring now in my notes. I guess that the other part of my notes, recruitment pool, could actually be the answer. It makes sense in the sentence and is grammatically correct. I read this section of text in detail and find that I'm right. The answer is recruitment pool. For answer 26, when the need arises, these candidates will be given something after which they may be offered a job. I choose the phrase offered a job to scan for. I guess that a synonym or paraphrasing will very likely be used instead, so I'm mindful of this as I search. A short way on from the last answer, I find a matching phrase. Extend an offer of employment. I now need to read in detail to find out what happens to the candidates before this job offer, 
which is what sentence 26 is about. The answer is, they attend a full interview. Does this fit the gap in the sentence? Yes. So the answer is full interview. Finally, I read sentence 27. On starting the job, a five week training program is given, which includes how to look after passengers and what to do in an something. I remember that one of the paragraphs in the text is titled training. So I go straight to this section and see that I've noted five week training course beside the paragraph. This must be the collocation of the answer. I read the paragraph in detail and find four things named as being included in the course. Emergency procedures, customer care, service delivery and equipment knowledge. The only word from this list that makes sense and is grammatically correct in the gap is emergency. This must be the answer. Note the indefinite article AN before the gap. This means that the missing word must start with a vowel. This is another little clue that emergency is the correct answer. I fill in the answer sheet and the whole question is now complete. I hope you found these instructions helpful. However, you'll only get better at answering table and flowchart completion questions if you practice the strategy yourself. Make this a part of your preparation work and you should do well if you get this type of question in your IELTS reading test. There's lots more help with the test, including strategies for answering the other types of reading questions, on my website ieltsjackie.com and in my other videos. There's a link to the website in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.